All right, looks like people have joined. If you're watching on Timepiece Gentlemen, I'm gonna be looking more at my personal account. So Anthony W. Fair is the main Instagram account I'm broadcasting from. And so I'm gonna to try to look back and forth, but this is the main one. So uh, let's run through a lot of these questions. First question is, biggest regret in the watch business and in life? Um, biggest regret in my business is I didn't keep very detailed spreadsheets or notes early on. If I had, I tell people now, young watch dealers that are trying to get up and come into the business, even my sales staff, I tell them to start a spreadsheet and track all of your clients, names, phone numbers, emails, what they do for a living, what their annual income is, what kind of watches they have in their collection, what kind of watches they eventually would like to get. If I had just gotten that simple data early on, at this point, three years later, I'd have the most extensive book of business I could ever do. Client calls me up and says, hey, I wanna buy this watch. I don't even have to worry about dealers or wholesale. I go into my net, my spreadsheets, I type in, I pull up all the collections of people, find out who all has that watch and call them up to see if they wanna sell it. On the, other, on the flip side of that, someone offers me a watch, same thing, I go on my spreadsheets and I see who was potentially looking to buy one of these. That would have been the best thing. Um, biggest regret in life, uh, it's a sensitive subject, but I would say, you know, I lost my twin brother to a motorcycle wreck seven years ago. And my, in early adulthood, I got out, you know, up, up until we graduated high school, my twin brother and I were extremely close and we did everything together. Once I became an adult and got out on my own, I kind of like went my separate way. So he was still part of my life, but not as much as I would have liked to be. Obviously nobody counts on a death happening. So that would probably be it. Uh, next question, have I ever dropped a watch? Yes, multiple times and I ding them all the time. It's mostly my personal stuff. I, I don't know what it is, especially gold watches. As soon as I buy a gold watch and I keep it, I, I ding it on the way out the door. On purpose. Oh, yeah. Um, never eat, this is funny, never eat Nick and Sam's again or fire Dylan. Oh my. This is really funny because I'll see you guys later. I'm because fucking... Dylan is standing right there while we do this. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm out of a job. That's it. Dylan, what do you think the answer to that is? Well, I think Nick and... Mm -hmm. I'll just keep it trucking, man. I'll see you guys later. Uh, that is a tough decision because I do love Nick and Sam's, but Dylan is the first employee. He's number three in the company. Besides Marco and myself, Dylan was our first actual employee. So I think I would be willing to give up Nick and Sam to keep Dylan on. He's an intricate part of our business and he runs a lot of the stuff. He's the only person I trust. He's the only person besides Marco that had, and myself that has the code to my safe and our alarms. So don't forget that Dylan. I never, I go to sleep every night saying it. How much, next question. Uh, how much has making YouTube videos affected your company in terms of sales? Well, it's been, I mean, absolutely amazing. Most of you guys that have been following for a long time already know that I was big on social media. I had a massive Instagram following uh, before YouTube, before the TikTok video. So it was really just a chain of events. I had this massive Instagram account. I had multiple Facebook groups. I was in every watch platform, every sales platform before all that. Then we had a great little spurt of business due to Daniel Mack's TikTok video that boosted the Instagram account. And also, we had just recently started the uh, YouTube channel about a month before that video came out. Once we gave away the Rolex to Daniel Mack, we put a video on YouTube about it. That video, to this day, I still get at least one text message uh, Instagram message or phone call about the generous, uh, the generous, what do you call it? I don't know about us giving him that watch. People see that video. They see the TikTok video. He pushes them to our YouTube. They watch my story. They watch more stuff. Now what we've got going on is we're doing this day in the life series that actually brings you into our business. And you know, that is, and then my Instagram account got deleted. YouTube is the driving factor for business for us right now. So I would say where Instagram used to be 90% of our business and revenue, now it's, now it's YouTube. But I would say it's even more. People 
we're getting people call us, text us, email us every day from the from all over the world just from seeing the YouTube channel. People that weren't even interested in watches before got the recommendation on YouTube, started watching our channel, you know, fell in love with the business, fell in love with our team, and now they're looking to do business with us. So YouTube's an intricate part of the business now. Uh, next question. When you say profit, you mean sold price, what you paid, or all the expenses together rent. So I guess what you're talking about is at the end of our videos, whenever I give you our total sales and our profit for the week that price that profit is gross profit it's before expenses so that does not include rent bills expenses yada 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 not yet let's see what are your thoughts on jacob and co watches do they retain their value jacob and co watches they are they're cool um it's not it's not a brand that i've invested in it's not a brand that I own any pieces from. I think the stuff that they make is awesome. Je uh, Jacob is an incredible jewelry designer. His watches are pretty cool. Uh, I don't see them holding their value. Um, I think they are trying to compete in a sense along the same thought process as Richard Mill. Uh, they've got some big ambassadorships. They've got some crazy out there pieces. Uh, the problem is like what what put Jacob back on the map is the uh, what, what are those the Astronomia series Astronomia, Astronomia series um, those are badass watches they're just so big like not many people can wear when you've got a million dollar plus watch that's fifty millimeters it's a very limited market I think they're really cool watches I personally don't own one for a reason I don't see them holding long term value like uh, Richard Mill Paddock AP yada yada. Which wrist should you wear your watch on? Whichever one you're comfortable on. Would you buy the new Batman or Batgirl in regard to long-term collector's perspective? Uh, no, I would buy the discontinued one. If you, if you care more about the investment side of it, but you do want a Batman, I would go for the 116710, the previous version, uh, the discontinued Oyster version. That would be your best bet. Uh, maybe too personal, but how is the love life? I work. I love my job. Next question. Why do you work out with your watches? Well, um, one, I love my watches. Two, they are actually like a business card or like a business. Um, that's my business card. I was wearing this this morning when I worked out. The gym I work out at is Sanders Fit Performance Center with Melvin, who is a former NBA player. A lot of his clients are pro athletes. A lot of his clientele base are people of means. They know these watches. I got three or four compliments just from working at it. People that don't even, you know, and this one's an understated watch. Sometimes I wear a gold watch to a new gym. Most people probably look and say, you know, who's that douchebag wearing the gold watch at the gym? The other people, I don't care about those people. The other people are inter inter interested. Are they intrigued? Like, why are you wearing this watch at the gym? Um, and then I tell them I'm a watch dealer and it catches their attention. So where they might not have walked up to me before, now they're walking up to me to just ask why I'm wearing the watch. Then you tell them you're a watch dealer and it's it's just a business card for me. Plus, I buy my watches to wear. I, I don't believe in buying a watch and putting it away in the safe. I'm not afraid of dinging a watch. It's just a watch at the end of the day. I buy what I can afford. If I ding it, I'll fix it. Opinion on Richard Mill. Awesome. Absolutely in love. Hey, uh, get... Get um, Alfred in here or Dylan or someone to watch. I want them to help me answer questions. Do you think the stainless steel blue sky dweller is a safe place to put money into? Um, are you going to wear the watch? If so, yes. Uh, I would I would look at a Daytona though, sky dwellers. Hey, will you watch my personal Instagram account? And just tell me if there's any cool questions that pop up. Um, do I think the stainless steel blue sky dweller is a safe place to put money into? I would not do it. Um, personally, I love the blue sky dweller, but that's a piece I'm, it's a little different with me. I'm holding out for retail. If I don't ever buy one at retail or in the low twenties, I won't buy it. I do that for a reason. I think uh, as badass as I think the sky dweller is, it's also in a sense, it's just a glorified date just on steroids. I don't see it being worth high 20s, 30,000. I don't see it breaking 20,000 or 30,000 long term. So I'm not going to buy one. I would pay 20,000, but that's the most I'd pay. 
uh, let's see, did Sea Dweller, wait, do you see smart watches? Do I see smart watches killing timepieces in the next hundred years? Absolutely not. They've been making smart watches for what, five, six years, seven years now. And I've never even put a smart watch on my wrist, nor will I ever. Did Sea Dweller had a limited black edition before or all that came out are fakes, pardon. I think, I think you're maybe talking about a PVD version. Uh, PVD is all aftermarket. Rolex has never done a PVD watch. Let's see. What do you think about Ulysses Nardin? You listen to Arden. I like you listen to Arden. They have, uh, it's a cool, there's a, the Marine divers are awesome. There's a gold one that I used to love and I've, I've owned a couple times. The I think are. they're the, the freaks are, it's an interesting watch. It's not a watch you buy as an investment. You listen to Arden is a watch you buy when you want something unique. You want something different. You want something that tells a story that's that you're not going to see someone else wearing, and you don't care about the long term value. You just want it. You just kind of want something neat. Uh, what kind of insurance do I need for an expensive watch so I can enjoy without worry? Now, most uh, Jewelers Mutual is who I use for all of our stuff. Now, it's different for a dealer. I'm not sure the rates on an individual policy, but most insurance. I'm sorry, most homeowners insurance or renter's insurance policies have jewelry uh, deductions or declarations, whatever it's called. You can, add, you can add a watch onto your homeowner's insurance. You can add it onto your renter's insurance. If you can't, call Jewelers Mutual, get a quote, see if you can get approved for that. Let's see. What do you think of the sudden increase in value with the steel Daytonas? Well, it's not a sudden increase. I mean, the whole, and it's not just Daytona's, the whole watch market's up and it's been going up steadily since the start of COVID. If you think, I tell people this all the time. If you think about um, the clientele that can afford the watches I'm selling, a lot of them, you know, top one, top two, top 3%, they made a lot of money during COVID. Now I know COVID's a sore situation, but I'm gonna call it like it is. Uh, Financial, when you have times like we just went through like COVID, the only people that got hurt were the poor and middle class. Rich people got even even richer. Middle class people got even richer if they were on the, if they knew what they were doing. Um, the people that are buying these watches in the first place were are buying even more because they've been making more money than they ever have. Now, because of that, you got more people making more and more money. Stocks are going crazy, crypto's going crazy. People are looking for other alternatives to put their money into versus cash stocks. You, you see these huge fluctuations of the stock market, but prices on the watches are just steadily going up. And over time, they have just steadily gone, gone up. People are looking for stuff to diversify their, their cash into. Watches are safe. Um, I've talked about I have way more money in my watch collection than I ever will have in a 401k. My retirement fund will actually be my personal watch collection. It's what I know, and I think they're safer than stocks, personally. Um, so because of all of that, over the last year, you've seen the whole market go up. It's not just Steel Daytonas. But why you asked about Steel Daytonas, again, they're the most sought-after Rolex on the market. Everybody wants a Daytona, which means you know the supply, the demand far, out, far exceeds the supply. So the prices are going to stay. You, you may see them dip a little bit here sometime in the next six months or so, but it's just gonna be a small price correction and then they're gonna steady, steady go back up. By that time, if they start to really dip, I wouldn't be surprised if Rolex discontinues that. Any questions you're seeing? You have somebody interested in a 6701 in titanium. 6701 in titanium, uh, uh, DM me. And put uh, by Richard Mill on the top. Uh, I've seen this question a lot. Thoughts on the AP Black Panther? I think that watch is badass. I'm, I'm, Happy that they came out with a concept that was 42 millimeters. I was just in Miami and I tried on the 44 millimeter and as awesome as the concepts look, they're just too big for most people's wrists. When you get a watch that's too big and it's extremely expensive, it's a very limited market. So I do think that the AP Black Panther is an awesome watch practically because I can fit it on my wrist and I could actually wear it. Uh, another thing is I think that what people have asked me if I think that watch is going to be a success or a flop. I think it's going to be a success based on the fact that someone right out of the gate went and bought the, the one of one for $5.2 million. 
that kind of set the tone that this is a desirable watch. So the rest of them, they're all going to be sold immediately and they are such a unique piece. People are going to be very reluctant to dump them on the gray market because if you go to AP, if you're playing this game with AP and you go buy that Black Panther watch and then you sell it, that just killed your credibility with AP and they will know if you sell it. Um, you'll never get offered anything desirable again. So I don't think people are gonna, I don't think people are gonna go sell them a lot, which is gonna drive the value up even more. If you do own one of those watches, you absolutely need to hold it. You do not need to sell it, and I'll tell you why. Because buying that watch, it's it's a watch that it's a concept. The concepts in general have not done well. They trade well on you know hundred grand or more under retail. AP is selling these watches 250 in the world, I think 30 in the US. If you were lucky enough to get chose to buy one of those, it's AP's way of saying, let's see let's see how big your balls really are. You want to buy you really want to build the status with us and you want to play the game, buy this watch. If you didn't buy it, you just missed out on the, like the next black ceramic or the next uh, tur flying turbine or gem set piece, whatever it is that you minute repeaters, whatever it is that you wanted. If you did go buy that watch, they say, okay, this guy's willing to buy something that we have no idea whether it's going to trade up or down. He, he went and spent the money. Plus, one, he has the money to buy that. We're going to offer this guy good stuff as long as he keeps it. So, guys, anyone out there that has that watch, I highly recommend you keeping it for a while. So, it, But I think it's a really cool watch. you got people asking if they got burned uh, paying 8600 for a 216470. 216470 214270 I'm sorry the 8600 the one that was discontinued um no I think you paid you didn't get burned if you if you bought an Explorer 1 the 39 millimeter black dial for 8600 even 9 grand it's discontinued so if you bought it a month ago and then you're trying to sell it now yes you're going to lose money that's typically how it is if you buy something new and then sell it a week later uh, is you lose a little bit of money. I would hold that watch until any of those watches that anybody bought before the discontinuations, you paid full market price. If your watch didn't get discontinued, you need to hold it till at least Christmas, wait till October, November, December, and then put it up for sale if it's not a PCC keeping long term. The reason being is these watches aren't going to become any more accessible at the end of this year as they are right now. Come Christmas time, come holiday season, people are going to be looking to get last minute gifts. I always sell any watches I don't want. I always start to sell October, November, December, because that's when you're going to get the most bang for your buck. So just hold them to then. You'll be all right. Uh, let's see. How much are the black dial and white dial Daytonas? I'm banking on reference numbers. So I'm just going to assume you're talking about the 116500 ceramic black and white. Blacks brand new are thirty three to thirty five thousand. Whites thirty what thirty eight to forty now. Brand new, um, pre owned, deduct fifteen hundred bucks at the most. Let's see. He says, "How did you get where you're at so fast? I've been in the business for eight months and it's very slow." Uh, the first eight months. Okay, so the question was, uh, "How did I get where I'm at so fast?" I've been in the business eight months and things are very slow. So the first eight months are actually very slow. Depends on how much money you've got, depends on how how well known you are. Um, I didn't have any money when I started. I was not well known in the industry, but I knew I was well known in Dallas and I knew social media very well. So I, I recognized that. I immediately took to social media. I built up a profile much, much faster because I wasn't afraid to put stuff on social media that a lot of guys are afraid to do. So I had a little boost there. Because I started with social media, I got introduced to uh, Facebook groups and dealer groups where I met Marco, my business partner. Because of social media, Marco already knew who I was before I knew who he was. It, all, it gave him a sense, a little bit of a sense of trust. Um, aside from that, it, dude, it's, it's networking. I work 25 hours a day, eight days a week. If I'm awake, I'm thinking about watches, I'm thinking about my business. When I'm walking around, I'm always posting on social media. When I'm walking around, I'm always networking my business. I have 10 Instagram accounts. I own, I run several Facebook groups. I'm in dozens of Facebook groups. I eat out for every meal. I'm always talking. If I see somebody wearing a nice watch, I talk to them about it. So it's just, there's not, um, there's not like one set answer or one set thing. It's just constantly, constantly being out there marketing yourself. Both of my vehicles are wrapped. 
Um, I've done, uh, I've done collaborations with other big influencers. We've gotten lucky, you know, the TikTok thing, the YouTube channel, uh, it's, it's a ton of stuff. So that's, and that answers your question is how I got where I'm at so fast is I was willing to do a lot more than a lot of other people are. You know, I work, I'm up at five 30 every day. I stay up till midnight working. If, if, if there's something I've got to do, I get it done for the business. Let's see. What is the best way to reach me regarding collaborations? Uh, send me a message here on, on Anthony and just put collaboration in the title and I'll get back to you. Two-tone Submariner, sell or hold. If you enjoy wearing it, keep it. If you are just holding it for the money, sell it and put your money elsewhere. Somebody said, what percent of liquid cash do you recommend spending on watches? Whatever you're comfortable losing. Um, what percentage of liquid cash do I recommend spending on watches? Well, depends. Are you trying to are you trying to be in the business and buy and sell these on the side? Are you wanting to own some watches for your personal collection? If it's for your personal collection, pull whatever out. You know that if you've got ten thousand dollars sitting in a in a savings account that's just meant for fun, that's vacation fun, whatever, use that money. Don't go pull money out of your 401k. Don't go pull money out of stocks if you don't know what you're doing. But I guess the best advice all around is use whatever money you're willing to lose because you pull $100,000 out of your 401k and you start trying to flip watches and then you get robbed, there you go. You need to be willing to lose whatever amount of money you're playing with. Let's see. So how often do you get recognized in public? How often do I get recognized in public? When I wear my hat, actually a lot. This uh, this last trip to Miami, walking in the airport, on the way to Miami and coming back, a couple people recognized me mainly because of the hat, especially if I wear the camo one. Let's see, what are the barriers to entry for starting a watch business? Um, anyone that has questions about how to get into the business, it all starts with education on watches. You know. It's this, I got into the business simply by, by research, by getting on Craigslist and I found a watch and I did a bunch of research to figure out if this was a good price. I negotiated the price down and I resold it. It doesn't matter if it were, if, it, if I wanted to get into the remote business, I would do the same thing. I would figure out what remotes people want, how much they're paying for them on, on average, and then I would try to go find one cheaper so that I could sell it at that average price. So to start a watch business, you need to know about watches. And the other thing I will say is a lot of people see the success I've had. They see the lifestyle. They see the cars, the watches, the dinners at Nick and Sam's every night. And they think that by starting this business, they're going to immediately jump to that. That's not the case. I'm successful in this business because I am obsessed with watches. I'm obsessed with doing what I do. If I work 24 hours in a day, it does not feel like work to me. So... If you want to start a watch business just because you think you're going to get rich, you're not going to get rich. I promise. You're going to be too hesitant. You're going to be too scared to try stuff. You're not going to believe in yourself and you're never going to get to where I'm at. Now, if you think about watches night and day like I do and you can see yourself doing this day in and day out and you don't care whether you make a dollar, then you can be successful. Because I got in this business, I wanted to try something fun. I didn't really care how much money I made. I just wanted to do something I was going to enjoy every day. Turned out I was good at it and I learned and now I do make money. So, which do you think is more lucrative, this or real estate? Um, it depends. Uh, could I have made more money in real estate? Probably. Would I have been as happy? Probably not. I, like I just said, I can work 24 hours in one day and it does not feel like a day of work to me. I've had days where I'm up at 4 a.m., headed to the airport on a flight to, I'd, th I'd say my busiest day ever was I got up at 4 a.m. to head straight to the airport, got on a flight to LA, went and met a client, sold a watch, got another flight out to San Francisco. From San Francisco, I drove two hours to get to Sacramento to go meet a client and then drove all the way back to San Francisco, slept for three hours at the airport, got on a 6 a.m. flight back to Dallas, came straight to the office, worked until six. I mean, you're talking five hours of sleep in a 48 hour period and I wouldn't change it. I enjoy it every, every, I enjoy every minute of it. So to me, watch, watch dealing is more lucrative than real estate. So what is a great starter luxury watch? Well, depends on your budget. 
Um, if your budget is 1500 to 2500 I would look at Omega, Breitling, uh, Tudor. Those are probably my top three choices. If you can spend, if you're a guy and you can spend five to 6000 I would say a Rolex Datejust. It's gonna be very, very easy to sell at the end. Uh, it really depends on your budget. So how much could I pay for a brand new 2021 Rose Daytona chocolate dial? Brand new, I would pay 46,000 for Rose Gold chocolate dial. How am I liking my RM and will I get another one? I absolutely love this watch and yes, the day this one sells, I'm calling my boy Nilish, Neil, and Sean, Mc so Neely Shawani and Sean McLaren at Timepiece Training over in Miami. Thank you guys. Absolutely love this. Uh, the day this sells and the wire hits, it's coming straight to y'all as on the deposit for my next one. So I hope that answers that question. What's the easiest watch to flip right now? Rolex. Favorite watch of all time? The If I could pick one watch, it would be the AP Perpetual Calendar. Black, uh, black ceramic open worked skeleton. Love that watch. How would I dis how would I distribute sport models if I were an AD? Uh, I will never be an AD, so I I'm not going to answer that question. It doesn't make sense. Um, but I will say that I would probably do it the same way they're doing it because at the end of the day, it's a business. I would probably leverage the shitty models I can't sell to sell the ones I can sell because who wants to just sell the desirable stuff and be stuck with cases full of stuff you don't want? Anyone that doesn't know how a Rolex AD works, you don't get to, if I was a Rolex AD, I don't get to pick which watches I get. I can put in all the requests I want, but Rolex decides what I get. Every month they send me an invoice for a million, two million, whatever it is. I write them a check, then they send me a box. I have no idea what's coming in it. So I would probably do the exact same thing. I would give, and you're not gonna wanna hear that, but it's a business. Um, I would give my best spending customers the best pieces. I would leverage the more expensive, non-desirable stuff for the easy to get stuff. Hand me, I'll give you a perfect example. Hand me that uh, yellow gold full pave, or the full diamond one. Here's a perfect example. This watch right here sells for, retail is $125,000. This is a 36 millimeter full diamond bracelet, pave dial with rainbow markers. Gorgeous watch, but most people consider this a ladies watch. Not very many men are jumping to buy this and not very many women are jumping to buy a fact that they don't care. Um, most ADs, unless you're in like Vegas, LA, Miami, New York, this watch is not flying off the shelf. So the AD sends me this watch. I've got to write a check for 125 or 125,000 minus 38 and a half percent is what they pay for this watch. This has to sit in my case until I sell it. Why would I want it to just sit there and sit there and sit there when I know I can offer this watch out along with this Platinum Daytona and this Rose Gold Daytona or maybe just two little cheap Sky Dweller, or I mean two little cheap steel models. Uh, I move this, I make 40000 about $40,000, I make my $40,000 profit and I get it moved and I force someone to buy, I, I, I offer this one up if they're willing to buy two sport or two sport models. No, I said that backwards. If they are willing to buy this, I'll give them two sport models, which I'm still making money on. I was gonna give them away anyway, but I leveraged those to sell this and I made $40,000. So I would do the same thing that the ADs are doing. Um, thoughts on Hamilton? I, I don't know anything about him. Do I like Hublot? Uh, I think there, there's some Hublots I do like, I won't lie, and they look cool. The problem with, my problem with Hublot is that they give everyone and their mother a special edition watch. Every Hublot that comes out is a special edition. Every athlete that comes on the scene or every artist that comes on the scene gets a Hublot watch. Every trend gets a Hublot watch. It's just too much. It makes, there's no such thing as a limited edition anymore. Um, Best watch at 10,000. I would say if you can get your hands on it, my favorite would be a Datejust 41, reference 126334, blue Roman dial on a Jubilee bracelet with the flute, the white gold fluted bezel. That would be my number one pick. My number two pick, where's that Nilgauss at? 
Uh, my number two pick would be this watch, a Blue Dial Milgauss. This is a great watch for long-term value. When this gets discontinued, I think it's gonna be the most sought after Milgauss they have. You'd be safe there. I'm much for a green uh, right now. Let's see, do I like the AP, excuse me. <clears throat> do I like the AP Royal Oak Forged Carbon? Yes, I love that watch. The Forged Carbon's badass. It has a very unique look. The only problem with it, it's a 44 millimeter and I like, I can't wear it that big. It's That's too big for me. Uh, why don't I do a raffle for watch people buying spots? Um, I've done raffles before and it got my Instagram account deleted. There's a way to do it, but it's, uh, I can't risk getting other accounts deleted, stuff like that. Let's see. What What's the price of a Green Daytona right now? Green Daytona's pre-owned, 85,000, uh, 80 to 85,000, brand new, 90 to 95. And they'll, they'll hold. Let's see. Do I consider myself a role model and image of success? Um, I don't think about it like that. I think that I do a lot of things to, I think that I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't do certain things. If I didn't have a morning routine, if I hadn't uh, learned specific disciplines. So, and I came from nothing. I came from, and I, when I say nothing, I mean coming out of prison four years ago with, with zero money, you know, $1,300 and a two time felon, all statistics show that I would end up back in prison. So yes, I would say some people consider me a role model. Some people consider me an image of success based on my achievements. Uh, I still have a lot I want to do. I still have a lot to do. So I don't even look at it like that. I just, I look at things on a day to day basis. What do I have to do today to move the needle? And then I focus on that. And then if I do it today and then I wake up tomorrow and I think the same thing, what can I do today to move the needle? And I do that, things will keep getting better. And then when I look back six months ago to where I was and where I'm at now, things always get better. So uh, if someone looks up to me as a role model, I appreciate that. I like it. I hope I'm not letting you down. $30, are they a good investment? Absolutely, yes. What is the first watch under 5K you recommend for someone who wants to start a collection? Uh, I would say Omega or Tudor. A lot of history in both those watches. A lot of history with Omega. Good history, good good traction with Tudor. You can't go wrong on those. Plus, you get a lot more bang for your buck than going out and buying a basic $5,000 Rolex. Let's see. When we get an FP Jordan stock? I had an FP Jordan in stock and it just did not sell. I had to send it back to the owner because we just do not have, we don't have a market for FP Jordan. A lot of people were fascinated with it, but nobody yeah, people were fascinated it. with it, but they just didn't buy. Um, how many books do you read? I read a book a, a week and what I did, I've talked about this before. Um, every time I, on Sunday nights, I finish a book, I pull out my next one. I notate how many pages there are and I divide that up into seven. So that way I read one seventh of a book every single day. I read every morning, I journal, I, I, I'm I, trying to get better at meditating. It's just hard because my mind's always moving. So, um, but my plan is to read 52 books this year. I've also recently gotten into podcasts and there's a, there's a couple apps I use. One is called Headway and the other is called Blinkist. So I'll do a walk on the Katy Trail, which is this long trail around here. Um, I go on an hour walk, two or three days a week. And if you listen to Blinkist, Blinkist is an app that takes books and condenses them down into a 15 minute bullet point. So I can go on a walk 30 minutes down, 30 minutes back, and I can essentially listen to the cliff notes of four books. I do, I love those because it tells me if I listen to one and I really find myself intrigued or wanting to listen to it again, I know that that's a book I want to go read. I go on Amazon, I buy it, and I put it in my, in my uh, queue to read. Do I think the stainless market will go down? No, I don't. Um, I think that there every year there are more and more people jumping into the watch market that want to become collectors. I think there are collectors like myself that have more than one watch and more than two more than one watch of the same specific one so i don't think the demand is ever going to i don't think the supply is ever going to surpass the demand so the stainless steel market is is always going to be high and the reason being 
Most people, majority of people can't see themselves wearing a full gold watch and a lot of people have not adapted to, or they just don't like two-tone watches. Not everybody can see themselves wearing this every single day. I can, not a lot of people can. To a lot of men, a this is white, this is platinum, but it, it, silver. A lot To a lot of men, a stainless steel watch is, is a true watch and that's just how people look at it so no the stainless steel market will never go down will it recorrect yes eventually it'll recorrect because prices have been going so high so fast that it that's not sustainable they'll recorrect and then they'll come back out let's see what else you see anything in there um here's one do you guys use a finance to buy your inventory i'm guessing that means like a loan or a credit line no not at the moment we did just get an investment also that was a question i've had a lot did our investment ever come through? Yes, we did take an, uh, an investment on for about a million and a half. So partner that with the money we already had in the business and we're focusing a lot more on consignment. Sorry about that, somebody's calling in. Um, we did get our investment in. We own the, the money that we own our inventory with is money that Marco and I actually have in the business. Um, like I said, we just got an investment in and we focus on a lot of consignment. So I would say right now our inventory is probably 40% consignment and 60% we own with the, with the addition of the money that was just put into the business uh, and sold for equity. That's a good question. We want to, uh, we actually want to convert that to, we want to get those numbers to where it's about 80% consignment and only about 20% of the inventory we own. So if that happens out, we'd be looking at holding and owning anywhere from three to four million dollars in inventory and then having on hand by the end of this year i'd love to have seven eight million dollars in consignment inventory and then another three to four million in inventory that we actually own what was the question somebody said where does rolex source their diamonds from that's a good question i don't know that uh where does rolex source their diamonds i don't know but probably the the mines in china south africa I don't know wherever the best diamonds come from. Let's see what else. What other questions you see? What what different licenses do you need to legally operate? What different licenses? You need to have a ta a resale tax ID. You need to have actually that's it. Register as an LLC and create an LLC as a wholesale jewelry distributor and get a tax ID. That's all I have. Uh, what's your typical holding period for heavy hitters and how do you pick a piece to hold versus a sleeper? So that's a good question for okay. Marco because Marco usually gets How do I pick? So what are, say that question again. He says, what are your, what's your typical holding period for heavy hitters? How do you pick a piece to hold a sleeper versus a quick flip? Depends on, so, okay, so the question is how do we decide which heavy hitting pieces we're going to hold and we're going to click quick flip? Uh, honestly, it says that our well let me see let me think how to answer that say something like this it really depends on how much money we have back in it and how much marco or i want to wear it if marco or i want to wear it and we've got funds available and we've got plenty of inventory and, and stuff is moving pretty well then we'll end up you know keeping it for a little while uh it also depends on the piece if the piece is if we buy it cheap enough and we have enough room to make a good margin and we can afford to sit and hold it for a better margin, then we will. Depend, there's been a lot of watches that we buy with the intention of holding for two, three, four, five months, and then too many deals come along with better margins in them and we just end up selling that to jump into the other one. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of variables that come into play with it. But I would say the easiest way to answer that is if I really wanna wear a watch, we just wear it till it sells. As long as we can afford to sit on it for a few weeks and I want to wear it for, for the time being or Marco wants to wear it for a time being, then we just, we sell it when we have to. Do I sell my hats? No, you know, we looked at that. Um, people all over the country want to buy them and we just, we just shipped a bunch of hats out to some winners from a YouTube channel and it cost a fortune more than, it, you know, some of them almost double what the hats cost. It just, I kind of like it being special. So I like giving the, hats away to contest winners, to clients that come in and buy stuff. You know, it's just more personal. I don't want my, at the moment, I don't want the hats flooded all over the place. Although everyone says I should get into the merch selling business. That's not the business I'm in. It's just too much of a headache. Thoughts on Bulgari and Roger Dewey? 
Uh, Bulgari, they the new line that they've got, the Octo Finismo. Thoughts on Bulgari, Bulgari is the question. Uh, the new Octo Finismo. Finissimo, Finissimo, yeah. yeah, Octo Finissimo line is awesome. I think it's, I mean, that's pretty impressive, but I still look at Bulgari as a jewelry brand, not a watch brand. What was the other one? Roger Dubuis. Roger Dubuis, love them. The Excalibur line is absolutely sexy. They've done some incredible things. There's some gem set Excaliburs that I think are just badass. Again, that's a watch you want to buy if, you don't care about your money if you just want something different that no one's else no one else is gonna have. All right, what time is it? All right, about ten more minutes. Your, what your, other your worst buying experience ever? Worst buying experience ever. Worst, um, yeah, it says worst deal, but I'll just say buying. Experience. I'd say the worst deal is the one that happened a month ago where this guy like pestered me about coming up with one hundred and fifty thousand in cash to buy his watches. Had me fly out to San Francisco, drive an hour and a half to go meet him on my birthday only to dick me around and stand me up. That was pretty annoying and it's, you know, I don't mind traveling. I don't mind getting all that stuff done, but it was my birthday. I had other stuff I could have been doing. Uh, that's probably my worst. I've had some others that were just, it's similar stuff. People just drag you out, drag you out, make commitments. Um, I would actually, you know what? I'd say the worst one is when people commit to buy stuff and then they back out or they make up excuses and lies to back out of a deal because there was more profit somewhere else. I'm all about integrity. I run my business with integrity and loyalty. So when people show me that those aren't character traits that they possess, then that really pisses me off. Next. When are you going to do a fan meetup? Fan meetups. So I want to say That'd be a cool idea. May. It's got to be like yeah. want to watch it. In May, I would like to do a fan meetup. I'm not sure where we're going to go yet. Probably somewhere I can do some business at the same time. So the first one, either LA or Miami. Probably LA being that the weather's better there in May than it is in Miami. So stay tuned for that. We'll announce it. But I'd say let's plan something in May to where we actually do a fan meetup. And I'll give you all an advance notice so people, if they want to come from outside of California, y'all can plan travel in. And you have people saying do Miami, do New York, do Houston. New York, uh, it's going to be a little bit before New York. Space, travel prices, the you know stuff like that. There's too much going on in New York right now. Chicago, absolutely. I've been wanting to go to Chicago for months. So I'll actually be in Chicago. Actually, Chicago might be the first one. I was wanting to go to Chicago the first week of May. So we'll see. Chicago see. State Council is waiting for you. That's the funny. best perpetual calendar ever made. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, my. Uh, AP makes some badass ones. Va actually, probably Vacheron, to be honest. Vacheron's on top of it. Let's see, should I trade my 116505 baguette dial for the Rose Meteorite on bracelet? Oof, I'm guessing you're talking about this. So the 116505 meteorite, I'm uh, sorry, 116505 baguette dial is a Rose Gold Daytona with baguette markers on the dial, which is now discontinued for the Rose Gold Meteorite on a bracelet. Uh, I think the better value, you got to pick which one you think you'll like more. This is absolutely a, a sexy watch. I would say, honestly, long-term value, I would say keep this because if you want a precious metal Daytona with baguette diamond markers, you have three options. You have the rose gold baguette, you have the platinum baguette, and the Rainbow Daytona. Now, they also make this one on an Oyster Flex strap, but on a full bracelet, you have three options, the Rose Gold, the Platinum, and the Rainbow. They, you know, they just discontinued the Rose Gold. The Rainbow is, oops, sorry about that. The Rainbow is extraordinarily expensive and it's not gonna ever go down, so the odds of most people ever reaching that one are not gonna happen. And the Platinum, again, trading over 150 right now, a lot more unattainable. So I would say keep the Rose Gold Baguette for a while. Wait till the meteorites come out, see what the prices do on them. Maybe hold off to get it for retail. 
That's my answer. I'm keeping this one. This is my personal and I'm keeping it for a long, long time. All right, a couple more questions and then I'm gonna start to wrap it up. Oh, guys, if you are not following me on YouTube, go to the Timepiece Gentleman YouTube channel and give us a subscribe. We are trying to get to 250,000 subscribers by the end of this quarter. So uh, April, May, June. End of June, we are trying to get to 250,000 subscribers. So it, uh, it really helps us out when you subscribe, when you comment, it bumps us in the algorithm. If you share it on social media, it, all those things help. Let's see. Do I ever answer my DMs? Yes. I answer a lot of my DMs and I get over 500, I mean, easily 500 messages a day. So it does take a while. And you have to imagine out of every hundred DMs I get, 90 of them are just people, you know, liking a story post, sending the fire sign, congratulating on the YouTube, saying hi. It's, you know, it's 10% of them are actual business related. And that's what I try to get to is the business related ones. So it does take a minute because I get so many. I try. Um, if you're watching this and you sent me a message and I didn't respond in a day, bump it again. Just keep hitting bump until I see it. I try to get through them but it takes a lot. So bump it every day. I don't care. You're not going to bug me. So on any other account, every message gets read. Yeah. On all the other accounts, the time on timepiece gentlemen that gets read. Cause I let Dylan manage that gentlemen timepieces. Dylan also manages that along with two of my sales guys. So those messages, if you're looking to buy or sell message on timepiece gentlemen message on gentlemen timepieces, those get read a lot faster than my personal. Because you got to remember my personal, is a combination of personal and business, whereas the other two are just business. What is my espresso machine? The current one I have is an espresso, but I'm about to upgrade to a Jura. What does my crypto portfolio look like? I dumped everything out of crypto. It's too volatile. Um, I made a little bit of money really, really quick when we were having those huge spikes. Now I dumped it all out because I can take my money Give you an example. I bought uh, Bitcoin back when it was fifty three thousand. I sold it when it was sixty no no fifty nine thousand. I bought it back again when it was fifty eight thousand, and then I sold it when it was fifty seven. So I lost money there. I bought Ethereum at fifteen hundred. Sold it when it was at nineteen hundred. I bought um, what's that one that starts? There's one that starts with a B. Bancor Network when it was like 300 and sold it when it was 500. I, I made a little bit of money here and there, but over all of that, the amount of money I had tied up in Bitcoin for where it's, what is Bitcoin at today? 63, 64? Let's find out. Doesn't make sense. I can take, if I, if I had $60,000 in Bitcoin, even my $55,000 I had in Bitcoin two months ago has only gone up eight grand. 61,000. 61. It's gone up six grand right now profit. I could take $55,000 right now, make one phone call, buy a watch from a dealer, flip it to another dealer and make $1,000. The whole transaction would take two days. I get that money back in my account, I do it again. I just made another $1,000. I can do that you know, 20 times in a month and make $20,000 versus leaving my money tied up into something that nobody knows where it's gonna go it could go up, it could go down. So I don't bank on, I was just kind of doing it for the thrill, more like the gambling aspect of it, just for the adrenaline. Um, I don't know enough about crypto, nor do I trust it enough to keep my money in it, so. Do I invest in an RM now? Do I see them still going up? Yes, I don't see RM going down anytime soon, especially not after finally owning my first one and reading a lot about it. I think this brand's got a long way to go. You're gonna see him stay strong for three, four, five years at least, so. So you collab with Kevin O'Leary if any of them can reach uh, him? Yeah, I would love to do a collab, a collab with Kevin O'Leary. I'd love to do a collaboration with Kevin Hart, um, Mark Wahlberg, that's my idol. If anybody knows him personally, let him know that there is an identical looking guy to him that's also a watch dealer that works out and I don't know, I have this idea for a movie and I've been like subtly writing details down for a script It'll be a stunt double. and Mark Wahlberg will play me in that movie. So if anyone can get me in touch with him, that'd be awesome. Somebody said, what watches did you buy in Vegas? And it was just Collab with Archie Luxury. Uh, no fucking thank you. I'm not giving that guy any 
some guy that comes on and makes three videos, three hate videos about someone he's never even met, never even talked to. Why would I give him the time of day? What he's hoping is he's hoping that I'm impulsive enough to react to one of his videos and put out a reaction which would drive traffic to his page. Not gonna do it, sorry. Um, nothing he says phases me. Nothing he, none of his facts are accurate. He pulls his stuff based on, he pulls his information based on what I show him on social media. People that form an opinion based off of what I allow you to see on social media are making uneducated guesses on something they have no clue about. So nothing anyone says on social media can, uh, can phase me. Uh, unless you talk shit about Nick and Sam's, then fuck you. <laughs> Let's see. Arm wrestling match tournament. Dylan versus Marco. Who do you think? Who would win? Well, they said Dylan versus Marco, Darby versus Anthony. I don't know. Darby's strong. Um, and I suck at arm wrestling, so... It's all about leverage. It's all about leverage. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I think Darby would win on that one. I think Dylan would beat Marco. You've got longer, lankier longer arms. Legs. I don't know. <laughs> What's the biggest loss you've taken on a piece? Um, did you lose a, did you just lose a whole watch at one time? Yeah, I threw a Batman away last year. That was $14,000. <laughs> I We've been hit with wire fraud recently for 17000 And I lost a watch early on in for about thirty. So 30000 was my biggest loss. Um, why won't I make an offer on your 15400 OR? I didn't know you had one. I'm sorry if I missed the message. Bump it again and start it with the title sell so I know, oh, anyone that's ever looking to buy or sell, um, just message me buy, sell, and then send me a message with what's in it. Or start your message off with buy or sell. Um, collab with producer Michael. It's coming. Uh, actually, I talked to Michael the other day and I think we are going to plan something in June. So he has a tight schedule. Plus LA is just now getting back to where they're, they're opening it up and getting a little more relaxed. So, uh, someone's asking in the, in the comments, do I sell shooter? Yes, we do hit up, me. uh, hit up Dylan on the gentleman timepieces page and he can help you find that. He knows he's very well versed in tutor. How tall am I? I'm five ten. 180 to 185 pounds. How do I keep my, how do we got, how do you guys keep your inventory safe? Are you ever afraid of, okay. How do you guys keep your inventory safe and are you afraid of getting robbed? Um, we keep our inventory in an actual safe. We, that is alarmed, motion censored. We have alarms on the office and we're in a very safe office building. Everyone on my team carries a gun. It's Texas. Um, that's how we keep it safe. Uh, are we afraid of being robbed? No. I mean, the potential is always out there. We put ourselves out there with social media, with the wrapped cars. But at the same time, like I said, we take precautions. We are careful about where we go. Uh, just because you see me posting on social media doesn't mean everything's happening in real time, except obviously a live video. So... We don't just put ourselves in, we're not loading up a case of a million dollars in watches and driving through the ghetto, you know, waving them out the window. We, if we travel to, if we travel somewhere, sometimes we take private security. Um, you'll never see them, but they're there. Uh, and on top of all that, we're insured. So we, we take as many precautions as we can, but there's, the risk is always there. It's something we're willing to, to risk, I guess. What else? A couple more questions and then I'm going to call it a day. Did you start one? Um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? I would say a mentor one time said, if you don't, well, there's a couple, they're, they're cliche quotes, but you know, he said, if you don't do it, someone else will. Um, don't take advice. I'd say this, don't take advice from friends and family. Friends and family are there to be safe. They don't want you taking risks because they don't want to see you get hurt. Well, the life of an entrepreneur is all about risk. You are not going to be a successful entrepreneur if you play it the safe route. I've got several friends that I talk to all the time 
that great people, great business, they make money, they do well, but they're not going to scale. They're not going to ever get, they're never going to reach their full potential because they are a, they're a hundred percent afraid of taking risk. I have put, I've risked the, not the business, but I've risked large amounts of money. I've risked, um, a lot of reputation. I've risked a lot of stuff to get to where I'm at today. And I always risk it because I'm willing, you know, the risk versus the reward. Uh, I don't know. I'm not afraid of starting over. So I would say, I don't know. The best advice is you, if you believe best advice is you can do anything you want if you believe in yourself. So don't, and don't take, don't take advice from friends and family because they are never going to tell you, yes, you, here's what a friend will never do. Here's what a family member will never do. Yes. You tell you, yes, you should go quit your corporate nine to five job that guarantees you insurance that does your 401k match that lets you have weekends off and it's going to give you three weeks paid vacation and blah, 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 blah. Guess what? You're always going to work for the man and nobody ever got rich or extremely successful by working for someone else. That person got rich and extremely successful. So, uh, yeah, don't take advice from friends and family. What's in my personal collection? I have, currently I have 16 watches in my personal collection and I'm not gonna tell what all they are. If you watch my stories, you'll see I wear them all the time, but uh, I'm actually gonna do a separate video and I think I'm gonna let producer Michael reveal my watch collection in June. So I may add a few more pieces by then. By then, we'll see. Dallas meetup, yes, I'd love to. Um, shoot me a message, bump it until I see it and we'll get something planned. All right, one more question and then I, here, best question to end on. Uh, what are your life goals for the next five years? Five years out is a long, long time. Sorry, I keep getting keep getting calls. Um, five years out, I want to for sure move. Actually, by the by this year, I want to move us into a bigger space. I want to have my business and my team fully automated to where I can step away from a month and the business runs fine. I want to be focused on growing the business and working on the business versus in it. Uh, I'd like to buy a big goal. I'm going to buy a house or a vacation property in Lake Tahoe. I want to travel to 15 or 20 countries with my kid. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. In five years, I want to be set on a plan. You know, I'd like to be in a relationship, maybe married, start a family by then. Who knows? I don't know.